Hi, I'm Lou. Another episode of My Car Story. I'm here with John Adams. John, good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. And we're at the World of Wheels in Rosemont, Illinois, and we're going to show you some of the great cars that they have here. So with that being said, I'm going to grab the cameras I usually do. Come on out to the Rosemont Convention Center and see the World of Wheels. So, Don, before we jump into your car, uh, why this car out of all the cars in the world? Always had a passion, always loved the Rivieras. Always thought they were a sweet car, and all my buddies were into muscle cars, and I was always into the luxury, so I ate them out with class and fast. There you go. And what did your dad, how did your dad help you there in the beginning? Uh, by getting rid of uh, the 64 Gal Ford Galaxy 500 convertible in my senior year of high school, trading it in on a four-door LeSabre. How were the ladies treating you at that point? <laughs> it was no chick magnet. There you go, okay. And so come on back here. This is not just a Riviera, which is a 1969, but this is all original, correct? Correct. Wow. It's a Grand Sport. So come on with me. Yeah, uh, keep talking. Out of the Grand Sport run uh, in 69, Buick made approximately 54,000 Rivieras, only built 5,272 Grand Sports. So not even 10% of the run were Grand Sports. And you, you wanted a Riviera because you had one. I had one after high school, it was the first car that I purchased. And I traded that one in in 75 on a LeSabre convertible that I, lucky to say, I still have it. And uh, I've just always had a love with Buicks. I've, thank God I've had very, very good luck with the cars with their- Great uh, shape right there. With their reliability, they've never let me down from the house. I've never had one towed home. And I know that you, you had one, and then you then you kind of lost it or sold it. And I traded it in because I had a I had a bug for a convertible again. Because Dad getting rid of that one in my senior year, I never got my drivability of a convertible. I never got it out of my system. Yeah, the vinyl goes right into there, right in the post. The wipers hide behind the hood there. And uh, so, with that being said. Where'd you find this one at? I found it in our monthly club magazine, the Buick Bugle, in uh, 2002. And in 2002, just to be specific, you weren't acting very normal, were you? Uh, well, I was, but when I found the article in the Bugle, uh, I guess I got a little funky, and my wife noticed a change in my personality. And she asked me what was going on, and I said there was nothing wrong. And she kept quizzing me on it. I said, okay, if it's gonna mean that much to you, here's here's the book. You read the article and you tell me. And she just said, well, it's a Riviera. I said, yeah, and? Well, you've talked, you've wanted one. And I said, right. She said, well, call the lady. This is what you want, go how, get it. How awesome is it when your wife supports the idea? <laughs> Oh, I had to do a double take and ask her again because I didn't believe my ears were hearing right the first time. Isn't that great? Is that the, the where that's the gas, the goes gas cap? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Shut that again. That's nice. All right, so let's go in. Let's go in the side. Yeah, that is awesome when when your wife does that. So she did that. You double take, and here it is. And the car was originally supposed to be in where? It was uh, in, Sparta, it was, Wisconsin. Which is how far from you? Uh, probably about 700 miles. Which is nowhere near you. No, it's close to the Minnesota border. But what happened when you called? When I called the lady, she said that the car was at her sister's house and it was in the city of Chicago. <laughs> she gave me her sister's phone number. And when I called the sister, the car was about 15 minutes away from me in uh, the Beverly area of uh, south side of Chicago. Wow, so it turns out it was in your backyard the whole yes. time. That's a speaker in the back, I'm assuming. Yes. And that looks it, like a rear window defogger. Yes, it's a blower. Blower, right. Okay. And the speaker is a, the car does have a rare option for 69 in that it is an AM FM stereo. Oh, really? Front and rear speaker. They didn't have four speakers at that time. They just had the front and the rear, but it is a full stereo from the factory. Wow. And the car does have a uh, accessory factory A-Track tape player hanging underneath the dash. The tape player from the factory. From the factory. So there's your tape player. And it works. That is great. And there's your radio. AM FM stereo. Buick across the, the center. And we've got the Riviera down there. And 
wonderful. It's pretty well loaded. Pretty about, cool how this goes back. Yeah, that was, uh, if I remember correctly, it was 69 and 70 only that had that uh, shifter pattern. That's cool. They, they went back to a uh, T-bar pattern after that, and before that. Let's look under the hood for a second. Sure. see some headlights here. We're going to see how those work in a second. All stock other than the battery disconnect. Yeah, sure. It's just the way it left Flint, Michigan in October 68 when it was built. There's the, there's the badge for those people who like to read all that detail. Here's your engine compartment and what do we have? A, what did it say? 430 by 4? Yes. This was actually the last year for the 430. The 70, the Buick increased it to the 455. This engine was a three year run from 67 through 69. And you've got the extra horn. The extra horn, the four nord horn, like the Cadillac blast. We're gonna hear that in a second too then. And obviously being a Buick, we had air conditioning, and the frigid air. All the details there. Don, this might be the first time you're actually able to read all this. Yeah. I'll see if I can get that for you there. Okay. We've got another car coming, so we're going to give that one a second while we do this. Let's uh, get this back here. If you can get the world of wheels, you're going to have some other cars that are driving in. So yeah. that's what we've got experience in right now. Headlight instruction. That's Pretty in case cool. the vacuum quits working, well, so that you can get them up and down. We've got that shut. Let's, uh, we're actually going to, uh, let's turn it on and let's see how the headlights work. Should we shut the hood or keep the hood up? What do you recommend? You do it both ways. All right. Oh, that's cool. Let's bring, let's shut them off, the headlights. Let's blow that horn. <laughs> like a boat. All right, listen to that. Smooth. Yes. Yeah, let's listen to the exhaust note. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Let's shut the. Let's shut it off. Okay. We're gonna shut the hood and have you stand next to it. All right. Stand right there, Don. Right Stand there. right next to it. Hey, Don, congratulations on your wife giving you the approval here. And I know that makes you giddy and you still remember that moment. And thanks for being on My Car Story. Thank you very much.